I'm now going to do a PCR of the samples we extracted together. I'm currently working inside the clean bench. I've sterilized the camera before I put it in the clean bench. So this is an environment that you can flood with UV light to make it completely sterile. And between you and me, there's an air current pushing any of my cells back out of the clean bench. So nothing in this area is being exposed to my DNA. The first thing I'm going to do is wash my gloves using 70% ethanol because my gloves are not actually sterile and this will get off any bacteria or DNA that I've picked up on my gloves while I was preparing my work area or that might have been present in the box of gloves. So ethanol will evaporate fairly quickly so I just sort of give that a minute to do that. This is a rack that is used for PCR. As you can see it's purple but if I touch the corner here it becomes pink. This rack color changes depending on its temperature. So when it's in the freezer at minus 20, it's purple, at room temperature, it's pink. This will allow me to keep my tubes cold while I'm working. And then the rack you can see just here is the standard rack that we were using earlier with our DNA extractions. I've got a range of pipettes just off screen as well as some tips, and I have some tubes and my rubbish disposal as well. The liquids that I've got out here, I've got our two DNA primers, so HCO and LCO. These will allow us to determine which section of our genome we amplify in our PCR. Then I have my tag. In this case, I'm using GoTag, which is this green color. This is a master mix. So in addition to being TAC polymerase, it contains NDTPs, magnesium chloride, buffer, and a loading dye that will become important in a later step. This allows us to reduce the number of reagents or separate tubes that we use to go into our mix. So it reduces potential sources of contamination and reduces labor, but by having something pre-mixed like this, we also reduce our options for tailoring our mix to suit our purposes. So much like instant cake mix, it has some pros for convenience, it has some cons for versatility. And I also have some pure water. So this is very pure water, it doesn't contain DNA or DNA damaging enzymes. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is get my PCR tubes. So as you've seen with my percentage tubes, I'm not putting my hand in the container and I'm putting the lids on them as quickly as I can so that they don't become contaminated. These tubes have a maximum volume of 200 microliters, so they're very small. The microcentrifuge tubes you've seen have a maximum volume of approximately 1.7 mils or 1,700 microliters. For this extraction, I need eight tubes. I'm just going to label these one through eight. My pen is also sterile and was exposed to UV earlier, so it stays in the clean bench. Next, I need a microcentrifuge tube. This one, I'm going to label MM for master mix. My master mix is enough PCR reagents to do all eight of my tubes. I make up one big collection and then I'm going to aliquot it out into my smaller tubes. Much in the same way I might make muffins. I make one big mixture, not 12 individual mixtures. So I'm going to add primers. The amount that I add is dependent on the number of samples I'm going to do. If I need 0.8 microliters per sample, I'm going to add 0.8 times 9 into my master mix so that comes to 7.2. I say times 9 instead of times 8 so that I've got a little extra just in case of error. Here's my HCO, my PCR primer and I'm going to put this now into the ice, the blue ice tray that I've got off screen just to keep it cold and so you can see I've got a very very tiny amount of fluid. We're now working in very small amounts. Now I'm going to add the same volume of my second primer you always need two primers and they have to be a matching set that will amplify the same fragment of DNA. Next I'm going to add my water, 48.6 microliters of water, so that's 5.4 microliters per sample. So here, to get the decimal I've had to use the little lines that you see here. It works much the same way as a ruler. Finally, I need 
10 microliters for every sample so 9, 19 microliters total of my GoTac. I'm adding this last because it's the most expensive reagent and I want to make sure that if I make a mistake and have to start again it's before I've committed a large amount of the most expensive product. So there we go, you saw there I mixed by pipette, just up and down gently with a pipette. And now we're back to our pre-prepared smaller tubes. Into each one of these I want the final volume at the end to be 20 microliters. But in addition to the master mix we've prepared, I'm going to be adding three microliters of DNA. So I need to deduct that three microliters of DNA from my 20 microliters of desired volume. That gives me 17. So I'm going to put in 17 microliters of our green master mix into each of these PCR tubes. Because these are sterile, and this is all coming from the same tube, I don't have to change tips in between, as long as I don't uh, accidentally touch the tip. I'm gonna open up all tubes and transfer in, go along and add our 17 microliters of DNA into each tube. I'm gonna watch what I'm doing to make sure each aliquot or each portion looks like the correct volume. It's hard to be sure when you're first learning if it's the correct volume but over time you become used to seeing how much is in the tube and recognizing um, if it's the amount that you think it should be. And there we've got a little left over. We knew that was going to happen because we put in enough for nine samples but we only have eight samples. My master mix leftovers can now go on the end. I'm now going to take my cold aliquots of uh, master mix out of the clean bench because I need to add my DNA and I don't want to introduce DNA into this environment. In our usual work area, I have my DNA samples. So I have the six DNA samples that we extracted as a class, plus a sample which I have previously extracted and no works, and a sample of water. So this is going to be our eight samples that we are going to PCI amplify. I then have my eight tubes. I've recorded which one of these samples is going into tubes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I don't have to record large amounts of information on these very small lids. I'm going to use a yellow pipette, but you'll notice this one has a narrow tip where the previous ones you've been using had more of a blunt one. This pipette, instead of doing 20 to 200 microliters, does two to 20 microliters, which is stated on the top there. This pipette, when set to two Zero, 0 you can see the second zero is red so it's actually 20.0 not 200. First adjust this down to three microliters zero three zero and I'm going to add three microliters of our first sample into tube one. As I do this, because I'm working with very small amounts of liquid, I'm going to check that I've actually managed to get everything out of the tip. This is sample number two, PCR tube number two. So you can see it's a very much smaller tube than our microcentrifuge tube. The reason I'm keeping these samples cold is that the TAC polymerase that is part of our GoTAC Master Mix is activated by warm temperatures. And I want to keep it inactive until the beginning of the PCR process. I don't want it to start doing anything or any reactions to it at lower temperatures because the reaction is more accurate at high temperatures. If I keep it on ice it'll be completely inactive but if I have it at room temperature something might happen. So I've done our six class samples and then I have our seventh which is a mealworm beetle I know will work and a water sample which I know won't work because there's no DNA in there and I have my DNA plus my master mix and my PCR tubes so these each have a total volume of 20 microliters because we're looking at such small amounts of liquid it's very easy for a tiny tiny amount of liquid on the side of the tube such as this one you see here that tiny spot that could actually be a significant amount of DNA or reagent we don't want that to be separate from the rest so I'm going to put these in the mini spin that we've seen earlier to draw everything in the tube down into the bottom. I'm going to make sure that this is balanced. I've got two sides and I've got two tubes at each corner. So lid on. Yeah, 
I'm going to make sure that I am careful taking these out. I don't want to bump them and uh, have to re-spin them. Okay. okay, this is our thermocycler. Sometimes you'll see it referred to as a PCR machine. We've got, got our plate in the middle with our circular holes and little sort of flowery shaped holes. We want to make sure we put our sample into the round holes only, not these ones. You can tell obviously that's not going to sit very comfortably, so the round holes are the way to go. Okay, so I've got my samples in, the lid goes down. Select my program, it's just a touch screen. I'm going to go with GoTech PCR. It's all done now, um, we just put the unicorn on top for good luck.